Hey India, happy Independence Day. It's been 73 years only and you're already one of the most powerful countries in the world. Yet it seems that some of us still hail the colonizers. You know, people who constantly go like, "Oh, the British, oh, I love the British. The British developed India." Matlab angrez chale gaye aur unhe chhod gaye. This slave mentality of praising the barbarians needs to go because if mentally you're still under the impression that your colonizer was a kind person you are still a slave you're not independent so on the 73rd independence day of india let me help you become truly independent and i'm going to do that by telling you exactly how the british <coughs> helped india well let's start from the beginning The first thing you hear is England developed trade in India. Yeah. <laughs> Second misconception. The English came here looking for resources. Now if we look at the geographical graph of the present day UK, This is their resource distribution. Wait, let me give you a better representation. This bunch of islands had all the resources they needed. I know the UK is like a shit place to live in, raining 24/7, and they make an invasion sound so funny, like oh, the English people just wanted to get some sun. Well, darling, if you need sun, you come for a vacation, not an invasion. And now, when people go to England to work or study, and by the way. These immigrants they do it peacefully legally. England has a problem with them. Oh no, there are too many foreigners in the UK. Well, no one would have come to your place if you hadn't come to ours. Misconception number 3. The British brought trains to India. Without them, we wouldn't have the Indian railways. Now I know India is really senty about its railways but I'm seriously proud of IRCDC and that is that before calling Indian railways a british invention please research just google that on how poor the railway quality of british era was the rail tracks and even the trains also were poorly built and caused accidents frequently the next time you say you love indian railways britishers did not make it the greatness it is today IRCTC did with constant repairing renovations and 80% of the british railways has been completely repealed and built from a scratch and if you are someone who believes the british got railways to uh, develop india you know it's like saying that the butchers are nice because they feed cows well yeah they kill them later so what's your point the british got trains to india so they could loot us more effectively and it actually worked the british looted us of 45 trillion dollars to say the least 45 trillion dollars this only includes the jewels and resources they took from us not even mentioning the loss of life the british hail winston churchill as a war hero but the truth is he starved a oh no wait let's not put it mildly churchill killed millions of poor farmers in bengal to feed his soldiers in world war 2 Their own crops were taken away from them as the world saw its largest man-made famine. One of the world's largest humanity crimes even till date and the best part is the British are not even sorry about it. Ha. Huh. The Kohinoor that sits on their queen's crown was not gifted but it was stolen and you know classic Brits not even sorry about it. However, But lately these countries have been planning to return whatever they stole from African countries. Of course, you can't really arrange for the people you raped and murdered and the remaining ones obviously went into mental trauma, but apologizing and giving back what is theirs is the least you could do. So, would the great Britain do it? <laughs> They can't because 45 trillion dollars is 17 times their current GDP. London is built on the money they stole from India. That country could go broke if they decided to pay even one tenth of what they stole. So instead, they made the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> you know what's common about these games? That every country the British stole from competes for their own wealth. Haha. <laughs>
I know it sounds like I'm being particularly harsh on the British. The Mughals invaded us too. But if you see the graph, it's clear that even when the Mughals invaded India, India prospered. The Mughals never intended to loot us. For larger parts, they settled here. India became their home too. But the British, they never wanted to make us home. The Mughals developed a common currency. India continued to be one of the richest countries in the world during the Mughal reign. But as you can see, during the colonization era, India's wealth was drained too fast. The British entered India as one of the richest countries of that time. But in 1947, when they left India, we had become the second poorest country in the world. Now I know this makes the Mughal era look good. Some Mughal rulers were actually good. Akbar, to name one. And some were terrible. Aurangzeb, to name one. Some maintained harmony with Hindus and some wanted Hindus to be killed altogether. But who do you think actually created a tension between Hindus and Muslims? You should guess it by now. The British. The only thing British surely gave to India was Pakistan and we are still fighting the consequences. The British maintained divide and rule while they were here. But it seems even after they have left, we still remain divided. So is their rule really in the past? The British brought education to India. Well, there are a lot of misconceptions about how kind the British were. And this is one of them. Our English invaders brought English to India and only because they wanted their newly found slaves to understand and follow directions. But let me be very clear here. A knowledge of English is just knowledge, not education. When it comes to education, I wish people who say the British got us education had educated themselves on history because India had the first university in the world. Might I tell you about the Takshashila University in Nalanda, Bihar? This university functioned before Christ. And it is said that students from China and present-day Mongolia too used to come here to take education. And this is just one of those universities which have survived the various invasions. God knows how many ancient educational institutions of India were butchered by invaders. And let's not forget, India gave the world its first mathematicians, not Greece. Hell, without India, zero wouldn't even exist. Forget about maths. But the emphasis we give on English, as if someone who asks for yogurt is a sophisticated elite and someone who asks for dahi is an uneducated poor villager. English is not a luxury, not a privilege. The day you start giving so much importance to a foreign culture, that's the day you stop being your own country. There is a reason why I make all these videos in English and in Hindi so that you get it that it's just a language and I could also make these videos in Marwari but kai hai ki aaj kal ka Rajasthani chhora chhori Marwari to bole ko na ane aave ko ni Marwari ane sharm aave che aur eh ho raha kya angreza ki aulad anyway not to forget what they did to India had severe psychological repercussions also Indians despite being a highly cultured and ancient society were made to feel inferior. The obsession we have with fair skin is not so old. If you have read some religious Hindu scriptures, our gods are originally described as dark-skinned. Where do you think that suddenly changed? In fact, duskier women were thought to be of the highest standard of beauty. But today we have fair and dumbly ads running everywhere. The British took our wealth, our people and our esteem. So if you must calculate, calculate the inferiority complex they gave to India. If you must calculate, calculate what they did to the Himalayas. If you've been to Shimla and Manali, you would have seen these long pine trees. But these pine trees are not natural for Himalayas. Himalayas naturally had fruit-bearing plants and medicinal trees. But the British did not even want a pinch of India to be left in India. So they cut down, burnt down entire forests and grew useless pine trees. They abused Himalayas. They left the animal species of Himalayas homeless. 
but even before they were homeless most of them were already killed because the british loved to hunt and the royal bengal tiger was hunted to an extent that it almost became extinct so yeah the next time someone tells you the english developed india help them get independent too but but this hate is not against all the white people most white people were treated badly by the aristocrats and the rich class the hate is not against the whole of uk scotland and ireland too have been the victims of england's oppression ireland still is struggling the hate is not even against the whole of england england is a beautiful country with beautiful places and i also have some friends from england too a lot of indians live in england today and by no means do i hate the whole country the hate is against the few people like general dyer winston churchill and the elite british people who could have left the world a better place than they found it but they chose to ruin it the hate is against people who still shamelessly defend what the british did india is a much better place today and no the britishers do not have a part in our success story i swear to god if another person tells me the english helped us i'm going to throw isro in their face like what if they are so good where is their chandrayaan because our chandrayaan is up in the space in the first attempt reminding people that it don't need no brits and that's independence share this video with maximum people and help their brains understand that independence comes from within